Shabbat Shalom, everyone. All right, welcome. So everybody, let's take our seats. We can begin the service this morning. <clears throat> All right. Today's parsha is by Vayera, and it's and I appeared. Uh, the Torah portion begins in Shemot, Exodus, chapter six through uh, chapter nine. And the Torah portion begins with God rebuking and speaking to Moses, Moshe, and he says, I am the Lord. And that he appeared to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov by the name of El Shaddai, or God Almighty. But by Yehovah, Jehovah, was he not known to them. He tells Moshe of the covenant that he made with them, and they has heard the groaning of the children of Israel. He tells them that he is to tell the children of Israel that I am the Lord, and I will bring you out of the burdens of the Mitzrayim and will rid you of their bondage. I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. He said he will take them as a people and will be to them a God that brings you out of bondage of the Mitzrayim and will bring you to the land where he swore to give to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov as a heritage. And Moshe did so to the children of Israel, but they didn't listen. The Lord tells Moshe to speak to Pharaoh and uh, to let the people go. Then Moshe, Aharon, and those that the Lord commanded were to go before Pharaoh, although God would harden the heart of Pharaoh. When they went before Pharaoh, Moshe was 80 years old and Aharon was 83 years old. And the Lord told him to show a miracle and have Aharon throw the rod down and it would become a servant, a serpent. Moshe did so, but Pharaoh called his wise men, sorcerers and magicians, and they did the same by using their enchantments. However, Moshe's rod swallowed up all their rods and God hardened Pharaoh's heart and he wouldn't let the people go. The Lord commanded Moshe to go before Pharaoh and tell them, tell him that he would know that he was the Lord and that he would smite the waters of Mitzrayim and that they would be turned to blood. Moshe and Aharon did as the Lord commanded and when they did so in front of Pharaoh, the waters turned to blood. The fish in the river died and the river stank. In this parasha, by the power of the Lord, Moshe and Aharon brought forth seven plagues upon Mitzrayim and they were the plagues of blood, frogs, lice, flies, and murrain to cattle, boils upon man and beast, and hail, a hail that had never been seen before in Mitzrayim, so much that it had fire mingled with it. Only in Goshen, where the children of Israel lived, was there no hail or any of the plagues. Yet the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. The half to portion is found in Yekeskel, Ezekiel chapter 28, through 29. It starts with prophecy that the Lord will gather the house of Israel from where they have been scattered and he will sanctify, be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen and will dwell in the land that he gave to Yaakov. And they will dwell safely and with the confidence that he has executed his judgments on all of them and despised them and they shall know the Lord their God. He then prophesies against Mitzrayim and said he will make the land desolate and bring it into captivity. He says that Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, will seize it and take it prey. The Brit Kadashah portion is in Romans chapter 9, verses 14 through 17. And it asks if there is unrighteousness with God. And the answer is no. Because God said to Moshe, I will have mercy and compassion upon who I, who I will. The scripture is quoted, even for this purpose have I raised thee that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout the earth. We see here that God's faithfulness to his word and his people. And we can see also his choice as to when he judges those that oppose him and or his people. We see that he'll use people, pestilence, or whatever he chooses to bring about the judgments and show his love and his favor. We must remember these things in good or bad times for he is faithful that promised. Amen? Amen. Shofarim.
Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord God, that you have brought us once again to this place to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we want to acknowledge your presence here today. We want this service to be your service. We thank you, Lord God, for the plans that you have for us, Lord God. We know, Lord God, that it's not our plans, but your plans, that we must follow your word and walk in your word. Because our thoughts and our ways are not yours, because yours are much higher. So Heavenly Father, I ask today, Lord God, that we would focus on you, Lord God, and we would just give you our lives and our thoughts and our ways and our, and our prayers, everything that we, we have, Lord God, we want to give to you. Heavenly Father, I pray for every person here today. I pray, Lord God, that you would touch them in a mighty way. Lord, you know each heart. You know what each heart needs today. And I pray today, Lord God, that you would move in a special way in every individual. Lord, speak your word in their heart. Touch them. Heal them. Whatever they need, Lord God, I pray for them today. I pray for every person, Lord God, that might watch this service on YouTube today, too. And I ask, Lord God, that you would move on their lives, Lord. Heavenly Father, I pray for this worship today. Lord, worship was so awesome last week, and we just thank you and praise you for what you did, how you moved in this service. And Lord, we, let, we ask, Lord God, that you would move again, that you would touch our hearts, that you would allow your Holy Spirit to move freely through this place, Lord God. Lord, this is your service, and we thank you that you are here. So touch the words of the rabbi, Lord God. Allow your words to flow through this place. Allow the people to receive the bread from heaven that you have for us. Allow us to drink from the well that never runs dry. And we will bless you and praise you with our whole heart. In Yeshua's name, amen. Amen, amen. Let us stand together. For how lovely are the tents of Jacob and the dwelling places of Israel. Matovu. Shatin my Therefore, with joy, we shall draw water from the wells of Yeshua. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Begin the Baruch Hu. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamvarach. 
Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Leolam Vayed. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One for all eternity. The children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat, observing it throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Shabbat to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. Blessing Mashiach Yeshua together. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu, et derek ha-Yeshua, b'mashiach Yeshua. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation, in Messiah Yeshua. Amen. May all stand for the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kavod Malkutu Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. We have to add Adonai Lohecha, the call of Avkov, call Nashakov, Kumadaka, Bahayu Hadrim Ha'ele, Asher Anuki Matav Kayom, Al of Aveka, Vishina Talavanaka with the Bartabam, Vishitka Bevetaka, Uvleka Vaderk, Ushapka Ukumeka, Usha Tamliot Ayadaka, Vahilated for Beninaka, Ukta Tamma Zot Betaka, Uvishrecha. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them for a sign upon your hand and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall write them upon the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Vahafta, Leriacha, Kamoka. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, and God of our fathers, God of Avraham, God of Yitzchak, and God of Yaakov, the great, mighty, and awesome God, the most high God, bestows grace and creates all, and remembers the kindnesses of the fathers, and brings a redeemer to his children's children for his name's sake with love. O King, Helper, Savior, and Shield, blessed are you, O Lord, Shield of Avraham. You are eternally mighty, my Lord, the Resurrector of the dead are you, abundantly able to save, who sustains the living with kindness, resurrects the dead with abundant mercy, supports the fallen, heals the sick, releases the confined, and maintains his faith to those asleep in the dust. Who is like you, O master of mighty deeds, and who is comparable to you, O king, who causes death and restores life and makes salvation sprout? Our God and God of our fathers, may be pleased with our rest. Sanctify us in your commandments and grant us our portion in your Torah. Satisfy us from your goodness and make us rejoice in your salvation and purify our hearts to serve you in truth. In love and favor, O Lord our God, grant us holy Shabbat as a heritage. May Israel, 
who sanctifies your name, rest therein. Baruch atah Adonai, mekadesh ha-shabbat. Blessed are you, O Lord, who makes the Shabbat holy. Magnified and sanctified be his great name in the world which he has created according to his will. May he establish his kingdom during your life and during your days and during the life of the whole house of Israel, even swiftly and soon, and all say, Amen. Let his great name be blessed forever and to all eternity. Blessed, praised, and glorified, exalted, extolled, and honored, magnified and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed is he, though he be high above all blessings and songs, praises and consolations, which are uttered in the world, and all say, Amen. May he who makes peace in his high places make peace upon us, upon all Israel, and say, Amen. Yitgadal vetgadash meraba, Bamadi virkuti, Vyamik Malkoti, Bahaikon of Yomokon of Kai de Kol, Beit Israel, Baglavizman Karivimru, Yesh meraba, Mivarak, Lealam, or me, or Maya. Yet the Barak Vistpak, Vitpa Arvit Mamam, Vien that save at the Darv at Halev at Halal, Shmed Kudur Shabri Hu, Lealamin Korbakata, Vishrata Tushpakata, Venekamata da Miram Bama Vimru. O oh, say shalom bimrama, who yas shalom aleinu, ve'acho Israel vimru. Say shalom aleinu ve'achu Yisrael v'imru v'imru amen. Yase shalom, yase shalom, shalom aleinu ve'achu Yisrael. Shalom, Yahweh, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, May he who makes peace in high places make peace for Israel and for all mankind and say, Amen, Amen. amen. Lord, we delight in your Shabbat. Enter in your rest and in your praises we sing. Lord, we delight in your Shabbat. We delight, we delight, we delight in your Shabbat. We delight, we delight, we delight in your Shabbat. The face of the earth, Lord, we delight in your Shabbat. Call out a day when you rest from your work, Lord, we delight in your Shabbat. We delight, we delight, we delight in your Shabbat. We delight, we delight in your Shabbat. Brought forth a nation from Abraham. Lord, we delight in your Shabbat. It's fair to some night to provide a rest. Lord, we delight in your Shabbat. We delight, we delight, we delight in your Shabbat. We delight, we delight, we delight in your Shabbat. 
the prophets foretold that Mashiach would come. Lord, we delight in your Shabbat. Shemar Yisrael, the Lord God is one. Lord, we delight in your Shabbat. We delight, we delight, we delight in your Shabbat. We delight, we delight, we delight in your Shabbat. As you rest in when your work was done, Lord, we delight in your Shema. You rest by the work of your Son, Lord, we delight in your Shema. We delight, we delight, we delight in your Shema. We delight, we delight in your Shema. The lilies you dress and the sparrows you feed, Lord, we delight in your Shabbat. You, Elohim, provide every need, Lord, we delight in your Shabbat. We delight, we delight, we delight in your Shabbat. We delight, we delight, we delight in your Shabbat. Your people will enter your rest when we cry. Lord, we delight in your Shabbat. Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Lord, we delight in your Shabbat. We delight, we delight, we delight in your Shabbat. We delight, we delight, we delight in your Shabbat. We delight, we delight. We delight in your Shabbat. We delight, we delight, we delight in your Shabbat. Put off your slumber and the truth shall make you free. For our desire comes your Redeemer in the year of Jubilee. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord in the furnace of much affliction I have chosen, you behold, and so for I am, I'll give you silver, I'll give you gold, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. You are my chosen, for I have saw you, and you are graven on my head. And I will gather those who are scattered to their land. Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Awake, O Israel, put off your slumber, and the truth shall make you free. For out of Zion comes your Redeemer in the year of Jubilee. Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Shame, 
Never to treat you alone Hold the power to be No guilt complete Within us it to With prayer that brings the dead to life, words that pierce the dark of night, only by your blood are we set free. With mercy strong to carry shame, nail it to the tree, you alone hold the power to redeem. With bread that brings the dead to life, with words that pierce the dark of night, only by the blood are we set free. With mercy strong, care and shame, and nail it to a tree, you alone hold the power to redeem. With bread that brings the dead to life, your words appears to dark with light. Only by your blood are we set free. Your mercy is strong, you care and shame. You've nailed it to a tree. You alone hold the power to redeem. The bread that brings the dead to life. Words appear to dark with light. Only by your blood are we set free. Your mercy strong and care and shame. You nailed it to your tree. You alone hold the power to redeem. I adore your fame I come in to praise you lifting up my banner high dancers dance with all their might I come in Lord to praise you we come in to praise your name worship and adore your fame I come in to praise you lifting up my banner high dancers dance with all their might I come in to praise all the nations of the earth lifting one voice they say hearts and bow our heads we commit to praise you from your throne Lord you will reign all about the power of your name we commit to praise you all of the nations of the earth lifting one voice they say you are holy, O oh Lord, I don't say Oh, Lord. 
you open our eyes to see and our ears to hear all that you have from your throne, from your kingdom which is above us, which is all around us, from your presence, your Ruach HaKodesh which swarms us, Father. We invite you in this place. We invite you to be here, to speak to us, to open our ears to hear and our eyes to see all that you have for us, your people. B'Shem Yishuah HaMashiach, the congregation says, Amen. Vahiban Soah Aaron, when the ark would travel, Moshe would say, Arise, Lord, let your enemies be scattered. Let them that hate you flee from you, for out of Zion shall go forth the Torah, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Blessed be he when his holiness gave the Torah to his people Israel. Ya Amod, Yehuda ben Eliyahu la Torah, Barkhot Adonai Barach, Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Leolam Vayed. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol HaAmim Benatan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the Universe, who has chosen us from all people, given us His Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, Giver of the Torah. Amen. Yeladim. Go 
those that are watching this on the internet, this is a time in which we invite Hayel Adin, the children of Rosh Pina, up front. But before we pray for them, we say, Boker Tov, Yeladim. Boker Tov. Thank you, O Lord, for these blessed children and the families they represent. May they be blessed abundantly as Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, Ephraim, and Manasseh. Lord, I ask that you keep a hedge of protection around each and every one of them, Lord, from the sickness that's around about us during this season, and keep us safe from keep them safe from harm's way, Lord, for things that are also going on in the world today. Lord, I ask that as they mature physically, Lord, those that are standing before you this day that have not received you, Yeshua, as their Mashiach, you will draw them near to you. And when they receive you, O Lord, that you will surround them again, once again, with godly men and women who will assist them on their life's journey, a life journey of serving you. For we ask these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Vaidubair Elohim El Moshe Vayomer Elav Ani Adonai Vayara El Avraham El Yitzchak Va El Yaakov Va El Shaddai Ushmi Adonai Lo Nodati Lahem Vagam Hakimoti Et Briti Itam Latet Lahem Et Eret Knaan Et Eret Magurehem Asher Garuva Praise your Lord, Yeshua Mashiach. And God spake unto Moses, and he said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. And I have always established my covenant with them, to give them the land of Cana, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein there were strangers. Amen. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher natan lanu Torah timet v'chai olam Atah betochenu Baruch atah Adonai Nutein ha-Torah Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth, has planted eternal life within us. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. V'zot ha-Torah sher sa Moshe lifnei b'nei Yisrael al piyadonai b'yad Moshe this is the Torah that Moses placed before the children of Israel at the command of the Lord through Moses' hand. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, this Torah scroll is the Word of God, Yeshua is this Word. John the Immerser said in John 1.29, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. God's Word is written on lambskin, Yeshua is this Lamb. John 12.32, Yeshua said, And I, if I am lifted from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. The two wooden poles holding this Torah scroll are called Eitz Chaim, or Tree of Life. Yeshua was sacrificed on two wooden poles some 2,000 years ago for our sins. Eitz Chaim hi l'machazachim ba v'tzumchei ha'mushar d'archei d'akeno am v'kol netevatecha shalom ha'shavein Adonai alecha v'neshuv ha'kadesh yemenu k'kadem As a tree of life to those who take hold of it, happy are those who support it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Cause us to return to you, Adonai, and we shall return, renew our days as of old. Revelation 2.7 reads, He who has an ear, and I'm here at the Spirit, says to the congregation, To him who overcomes, I'll give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Yeshua was, he is, and shall ever be this word of the one living God that we look upon this day for our salvation. Amen. You may be seated. That one was on a mission. (laughs) 
How many are ready to study the Word this morning? Amen. The message this morning is the same as the Parashah's name, and I appeared. How many know that we live both in a physical and spiritual realm? And both our, our bodies are made up of both spirit and flesh, or physical. So we're going to be talking a little bit about those two, but uh, not specifically about our physical and spiritual selves, but the things that are in Scripture that's, that relate to that, that laid the foundation of where we are today for those that believe in Yeshua. How many have heard of the Ark of the Covenant? Now, how many have heard about it through Indiana Jones? Well, guess what? The Bible also talks about it. And there's a place in the Bible, in multiple places, that we see references of the Ark. Now, over the centuries, wondering where the Ark has gone has given rise to much controversy. So let's see if we can find out, see if we can explore the scriptures to find out um, where it is, what's happened to it. And we'll start by looking first at the spiritual world, and then we'll go into the physical world. Now Moshe was instructed by God to make an ark. Shemot, Exodus 25, 8 through 9, verses 21 through 22, and verse 40 says the following. And let them make me a sanctuary, that I may dwell among them, according to all that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle, and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. Now, let's, I'm going to comment on this as we go through this. But the sanctuary itself was, was the place where the Lord would come down and dwell. But there was also, there was, <coughs> there was many parts to this tabernacle. And the ark was in the central focus of that tabernacle and there was different layers that you had to go through in order to get to that ark and at the point where only the high priest was able to be in front of the ark um, to get messages from God where God would come and dwell and so there's 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 a lot of teachings that I've done around that about how that worked and how how it operated uh, but that's not we're not going to delve in that deep uh, to start today but when you look at the, 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 the tabernacle itself, it was a pattern. God instructed Moshe to build this ark in the pattern in which Moshe was shown of what the ark looks like, what the tabernacle looks like in heaven. Let's continue on with verse uh, 21 forwards. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things, which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. And look that thou make them after their pattern, which was showed thee in the mount. Now, we also see in the book of Hebrews, which is instruction to the, the children of Israel who had accepted Yeshua during the first uh, century that uh, this this book helps to sort of distinguish and contrast um, the Jews of that day, the rabbinic Jews of that day, and how now Messianic Jews should be living as it equ as it relates to the faith um, of that day. So we turn to bo uh, the book of Hebrews and we read the following, which discusses about this um, in chapter eight, verse five, which says this. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. So it was a replica of what was actually in heaven, and it was on the earth, but it was in the physical realm. So we see through this process, the, the author of the book of Hebrews, who we don't know who it was, but um, we know that uh, there's a discussion of how it's gone a transition from the spiritual to the physical, and that dwelt on this earth for a period of time. 
Now, was the ark still around in Yeshua's day? Well, we're going to get into that. But first, let's talk a little bit about John 20, verses 11 through 17 in Yeshua's day. And this is after Yeshua was um, executed and he raised uh, from the dead. Look at the book of Yochanan, John in the Brit Kadashah, the New Testament, book of uh, Yochanan, John chapter 12, verses 11 through 17. And I'm going to comment on this because there's two interpretations of what's going on here. I want to draw your attention to that as we're talking about uh, the, the existence of the ark in Yeshua's day. Go ahead. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Yeshua had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had, said, had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Now, here there's, there's two um, interpretations around uh, this, this touching, where Yeshua asked Mary not... To touch him. Now, let's focus in on the first interpretation, and that uh, really comes from the Song of Songs, and it focuses in on Mary and um, what's transitioning here between her and Yeshua in her eyes. Look at look at the interpretation here, Song of Songs three verses one through four, which really replicates pretty much what Mary's going through right now. Go ahead. By night on my bed I sought him, whom my soul loveth. I sought him, but I found him not. I will rise now and go about the city and the streets, and in the broad ways I will seek him, whom my soul loveth. I sought him, but I found him not. The watchmen that go about the city found me, to whom I said, Saw ye him, whom my soul loveth. It was but a little that I passed from them, but I found him, whom my soul loveth. I held him, and would not let him go until I had brought him into my mother's house and into the chamber of her that conceived me. So you can almost see the relationship here of Mary with, with Yeshua. Um, besides her, many were, were close to Yeshua, but you see where this Song of Song, as you read this story, uh, you could equate it to this, this Song of Song um, uh, and Mary's experience with Yeshua. But Yeshua says, no, don't hold on to me. Don't, don't hold me. The second interpretation comes about the touching. For there's, a, there's an interpretation which fits into what we're talking about today was that the completion of the sacrifice once he was executed, once he raised from the dead, he needed to take that next step and that was to offer up his blood that he shed for us uh, on that altar of sacrifice that's in the spiritual realm that exists in heaven, on that altar in heaven. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 3 through 9 and 11 through 12 says this. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded in the tables of the covenant, and over it the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest, alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. The Holy Ghost this signifying, that the way into the holiest of all was not ma yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. 
which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, but Christ being come in high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So it's almost like you have these two tabernacles, one on earth and one in heaven. Uh, we don't have time to get into this today, but many of you heard my teaching about how um, uh, the tabernacle, even though the tabernacle existed after Yeshua gave up his life and was resurrected, uh, they continued the sacrifices all the way up to 70 A.D., you, you've, you've heard my teaching that, that it's equated in Talmud that no longer did, were those uh, sacrifices uh, accepted by God. It's almost like looking at this physical pattern of the, of the tabernacle and the ark um, and the sacrifices were a mirror image in the physical of what was happening in heaven. So as the offerings would come forth in, in days of old, uh, there would be a replication that occurred in heaven um, that would, would reflect upon what was happening on earth and then God would accept or reject those sacrifices for the atonement of the sins. However, once Yeshua did what he did, no longer was that need to do that in the physical because now it's been established in the heavens so that from now on, um, anytime anyone has asked for forgiveness of sins, they are atoned for immediately because of the blood that's been laid on the altar in heaven in that ark and in that, in that tabernacle that exists of which Moshe was given the pattern of in earth. So from a spiritual standpoint, it is still in operation. It, what's happened is the pattern that was existed in the earth no longer exists. Um, so now um, we have to ask ourselves, well, does the ark actually still exist in the spiritual? Does it exist today? We know that it disappeared in Yeshua's day in the physical, uh, we'll get into the physical aspects of how it disappeared in a moment. But let's look at what happened in uh, today. Does it exist today? Well, we see uh, an indication of it in Revelation chapter 11, verse 19, which says this. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. So we know that the ark does exist in heaven. However, the testament is different. It's a different testament than what was in Moshe's day. But what is this testament? It's the testament of Yeshua. And we see that in Hebrews chapter 9 verses 15 through 28, where that, that uh, prophecy has been completed through what Yeshua did for us. Matthew, Hebrews 9 15 through 28 says this. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people, according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats, with water and scarlet wool and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament, which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled the blood, both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us, nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was, was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him 
shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So now we understand, um, and it may take some time for you all to review uh, the scriptures again uh, in this teaching, but we see in an encapsulation, and this is just scratching the surface um, about what happened spiritually and the, and the significance spiritually of the ark um, and what it means to us. And there's, there's um, still interaction between us and that um, from the physical to the spiritual. Drawing our attention now to the physical world, we want to ask ourselves the question, well, where is that physical ark? Uh, and we're going to get into this uh, by reviewing some of, the, some of these verses. But I believe that the ark had to disappear. It had to disappear, not to say that it's gone, I'm saying it had to disappear because of Yeshua coming on the scene. Uh, that 400 years before, um, before the B'rit um, Kadashah, before what Yeshua did, that, that intertestimonial period uh, where uh, there was silence between the Old Testament and the New, there had to be a, a change um, of, about that. And, and this ark uh, uh, disappears in that period to prepare the way for the Messiah to come, who was God walking among the earth in the flesh with us. Um, you can only imagine what kind of confusion that would have been if the ark still existed and then Yeshua was on the earth at the same time. One would question who is speaking, who is, who is God? Is there multiple gods? Um, so there's all kinds of things where I believe that ark had to leave uh, during that time period in the preparation for his return. Also laying the foundation for the way we now who are the temples, each one who believes in Yeshua, are, we are the temples of the living God. Now that ark dwells within us, and we commune and, and interact with, with the Lord through the Ruach HaKodesh and his indwelling, and now that, that inner being and relationship with God and what is the tabernacle in heaven has now been established to transition from the physical to the spiritual. In this physical world, where's the ark? Second Chronicles 5.7 says the following. And the priests brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord unto this, his place, to the oracle of the house, into the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubims. Now this was in Solomon's time. Second Chronicles 35 verse 3 says this. And said unto the Levites that taught all Israel, which were holy unto the Lord, Put the holy ark in the house which Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, did build. It shall not be a burden upon your shoulders. Serve now the Lord your God and his people, Israel. Now this was in Josiah's time. And reading this, it appears it has returned. But reading in the Talmud uh, about this verse that we just read, it means that it was hidden because of the prophecy spoken in Second Chronicles 34, verse 24 through 25, which says this. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the curses that are written in the book which they have read before the king of Judah, because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto our other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be poured out upon this place and shall not be quenched. It had to be hidden in a secret vault area that Solomon had prepared for hiding the ark in case of an emergency. Now after Josiah, um, Josiah's death, we read the following in 2 Chronicles 36 verse 10 and in Daniel chapter 1 verse 2 which says this, And when the year was expired, King Nebuchadnezzar sent and brought him to Babylon, which the goodly vessels of the house of the Lord, and made Zedekiah his brother king over Judah and Jerusalem. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. Now what's really interesting about this is this is when Nebuchadnezzar took them captive to Babylon. But we read about the vessels, but we hear nothing about the ark. So this is, this is, the, this is the interpretation or the, the support that the ark did not, was not 
carried into Babylon or was taken by Nebuchadnezzar because if they had, this would have been in, in multiple sources, both in biblical sources and external sources related to Nebuchadnezzar, that would indicate um, that this ark existed and it was moved. Read in Jeremiah 27, 19 through 22, which says this. For thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the pillars, and concerning the sea, and concerning the bases, and concerning the residue of the vessels that remain in this city, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took not, when he carried away captive Je Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, from Jerusalem to Babylon, and all the nobles of Judah in Jerusalem. Yea, thus saith the Lord of the hosts, the God of Israel, concerning the vessels that remain in the house of the Lord, and in the house of the king of Judah, and of Jerusalem. They shall be carried to Babylon, and there shall they be until the day that I visit them, saith the Lord. Then will I bring them up and restore them to this place. So, so we see here where, once again, there's a mention of vessels, but nothing about the ark. It appears as though the ark is not there. If you continue to read, and we don't have time to do it today, but 2 Kings chapter 25, I want to draw your attention to read that chapter. Once again, it talks a lot about the vessels that were taken uh, during the captivity of Babylon, but no mention of the ark. So it appears as though this ark was hidden in some way. But it is these activities that we've just read about in the Chronicles um, that it, con it confirms Jeremiah's prophecy of what was actually going to happen. So with that, we know something happened, but where did it go? Since it's not mentioned, could it have went to Ethiopia? We know that there's been many, many uh, uh, crusades or many visits in Ethiopia. There's actual place who, who they actually say they, they've been, the Ethiopians have been looking over the ark over time, uh, not knowing whether that ark was the original ark or that one of the uh, replicas, much like we read about in the Samaritan's Day where they established a new place for worship outside of Jerusalem. Well, what happened? It may be there, it may be not. But look in, in the intertestimonial writings, in between the Old Testament and the New. You'll find it in the Catholic Bible. It's not in the King James Version. Uh, but you'll find that in 2 Maccabee chapter 2, verses 1 through 8, a discussion about what happened to the ark. Listen to this. One finds in the records that the prophet Jeremiah ordered those who were being deported to take some of the fire as has been mentioned, and that the prophet, after giving them the law, instructed those who were being deported not to forget the commandments of the Lord, or to be led astray in their thoughts on seeing the gold and silver statues and their adornment. And with other similar words, he exhorted them that the law should not depart from their hearts. It was also in the same document that the prophet, having received an oracle, ordered that the tent and the ark should follow with him, and that he went out to the mountain where Moses had gone up and had seen the inheritance of God. Jeremiah came and found a cave dwelling, and he brought there the tent and the ark and the altar of incense. Then he sealed up the entrance. Some of those who followed him came up intending to mark the way, but could not find it. When Jeremiah learned of it, he rebuked them and declared, The place shall remain unknown until God gathers his people together again and shows his mercy. Then the Lord will disclose, disclose these things, and the glory of the Lord, and the cloud will appear, as they were shown in the case of Moses, and as Solomon asked that the place should be specially consecrated. So now you have it. It seems as though through the scriptures, the mystery as to where it is um, appears to be solved. We just don't know exactly. We know the area, but we don't know specifically which cave or cavern or where it is. Um, in, in looking at uh, the, the chronicle of what happened in the second book of Maccabees. Now, the whole matter of the spiritual and physical ark is like the matter of experiencing God spiritually and physically. The ark had to go out of the physical because if it had not left, it would be worshipped. Remember this, when God appears, 
Those who know him see him in the experience. The rest just hear about it. Matthew 24, 26 says this. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. You need to worship God spiritually, not physically. Many worship God physically. You need to worship him spiritually. Does it take a crisis to occur for you to see God moving in your lives? As he did when the ark was used by him as, he, as a dwelling place to appear and to speak? Or can you feel his tug on your spirit? We are living in a, in a, a time to express great, gratefulness for what he's done for all of those who dwell, who, who belong to him. And remember, he rewards those who diligently seek him. Hebrews 11, 6 says this. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now when I say seeing God, some of you may hear scriptures coming into your spirit that says no man has seen God. We know that Moshe actually asked, could I see you? And God only allowed him to see his backside. So when I say seeing God, remember, no man has seen the Father, but through the Son. But what we do see is his attributes, his manifestations, and it is with faith through spiritual eyes that we can see him through his attributes, manifestations, and his Son's activities in this week's parashah, Moshe had two messages to present that address needs. But his message from God was to two audiences in Mitzrayim in Egypt. One was to address the need of physical freedom from the bondage. And the other was for the children of Israel to get out of Mitzrayim, Egypt, to spiritually worship him, worship the one living God. This is no different than today. Look for your spiritual bondage and discard it. Because Yeshua freed you from the need to recognize. You need to recognize it. He's freed you from spiritual bondage. And realize where you are in the two messages of Moshe. Remember, we live in the physical, we live in the spiritual. God said that it's great for us to live in the spiritual, that we should, we should seek to live always in, in our spiritual lives. The reality is we are spiritual and we are physical. The laws that God gave us in his scriptures are designed to address the physical aspects of our lives when we have a tendency to live in the physical. When we live in the spiritual, there's no need for those physical laws or those instructions. So you, there, you have this constant going back and forth depending upon where you are in your life. You see Paul talk about it when he talks about uh, addressing the physical aspects of his life and the spiritual aspects of his life. Exodus Shemot 8, 24, 22 through 24 says this, And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. To the end thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth, and I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. And the Lord did so, and there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh and into his servants' house, houses, and into all the land of Egypt. The land was corrupted by reason of the swarm of flies. The two messages. You're not subject to the flies. You belong to Yeshua. Exodus, Shemot 9, 4 through 7 says this. And the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt. And there shall nothing die of all that is the children of Israel. And the Lord appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. And the Lord did that thing on the morrow. And all the cattle of Egypt died. But of the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. 
And Pharaoh sent, and behold, there was not one of the cattle of the Israelites dead. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. No pestilence for us. Shemot 9, verse 26 says this. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, was there no hail. There was no hail for us either. We are, when we're in the spirit with Yeshua, we are excluded from the things of the world. You should shed the bondage of the physical by recognizing the difference in the fact that you belong to God. And when you do, joy will come. Understanding that you're not of this world, but you're in this world. That you belong to Him, and we in our spirits belong to Him. Shemot 10, 21-23 says this, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. No matter what happens around about, and there's a lot going on around about us in these end times, you will see God's light if you are looking for it because you are in it if you belong to him. Matthew 5.14 says this. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So shed the physical bondage you allow to be around you and express your freedom through praise. Isaiah 61.3 says this. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Put on a garment of praise and watch that physical bondage flee. Praise him for what he has done for you today. Colossians 3, 2 says this. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. And when you do set your affection on things above and not things of earth, when you do, you will see the ark that is in the spirit and not some ark that is in the physical. That physical ark is something that when it comes or you discover it, mark my words, you will treat it as an idol and you will worship it. Stay away from the physical idols. Stay away from those physical ar arcs and look for the spiritual ark. And if you do seek after that spiritual ark, you will find it. John 4, 23 to 24 says this. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. It is our duty to praise the Master of all, so to ascribe greatness to the author of creation. For he's made us unlike the nations of the lands, and has not placed us like the families of the earth. He's not made our portion like theirs, and our lot like their multitudes. And we bend the knee and bow and acknowledge our thanks before the King over kings, the Holy One, blessed be he. He stretches out heaven and establishes earth's foundation, and the seat of his glory is in the heavens above, and the presence of his powers in the most exalted heights. He is our God, there is none other. True is our King, there is nothing beside him, as it is written in his Torah, and you shall know this day and take to your heart that the Lord, he is God in the heavens above and on the earth below, there is none other. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together.
to your altar once again, Lord, will you call me? I'm on my knees, I reach for you, I feel your presence all around me.
gone. All worry is gone. Oh, oh, oh you Lord. Worship you, glorify you, Master of Legions, Melechah Melechim. Surround us with your presence, make us your ark, Father. Your spirit, fill us with your glory. We can walk the earth, Father, and be an ensign to the world around us, the nations. All who have fear, all that are walking in the dry wastelands, the desert places, they come to you, they find their rest. An oasis, a place of change, of hope. The healing. Those are walking pain. And learn to fill you. Fill with you, Father, your whole spirit, your whole being, that their bodies would be filled with you. Their eyes would be fixed upon you, upon your goal and your aim for us, the mark that you've placed before us. One shepherd, when you come to the gate, you call out their names, sheep that are yours, the ones you have chosen, they will hear your voice, they will come to you. You are the good shepherd, and your sheep do know your voice. There are two flocks which will become one. You are guiding and directing, Father. We praise you, and exalt you. And we anticipate when that gate opens, that heavenly gate, in the sky it opens and you come walking through as Mashiach ben David. You call your people. In your mouth that speaks and sounds and blasts like a horn. And the whole world will hear it. To those that are not of you, it says confusion. But to those of us who are in your name, we hear your call. We come into your arms for Menucha resting place. We worship you, Lord. We sing of your great love. There's none like you in all of heaven. And all that is within me desires to bless your name. And we live our lives to worship you alone. Out of darkness, you brought us into your glorious light. And we love to see you glorified and lifted high, to see the nations bow their knees to you. You alone, Yeshua, can cause the hearts of those who are cold to find everlasting peace. You are holy.
Lord, we worship you today. We honor you. There's none like you in heaven and on all of earth. Ain't come on, God, I. Balim Adonai. We stand in your presence today and we thank you for pouring out upon us the Ruach HaKodesh, presence, your spirit, Shekhinah. We invite you, Father God, to continue with us this week, to clothe us in your glory, to wrap us in your word, to open our eyes to see all the things you have for us, Lord, as we walk along this path and this journey. We would stand here seeking you, that our vision would not be blurred, that our focus would not be off, that our eyes are fixed on you. We have faith. Stand in your presence forever. We honor you, glorify you. Shem Yeshua Mashiach, the congregation says. As always, please check out the back table. We have CDs of today's message that will be there. If we run out, please uh, see me after service and we can make some more. Uh, also, we have uh, two things going on today for the new Barn Bat Mitzvah class. Uh, first, we're going to have uh, the Barn Bat Mitzvah class with Joel in the back room about 1.15 still. It's 1 o'clock right now. So in about 15 minutes, uh, the kids that are part of the new uh, Bar and Bar Mitzvah class, please see Joel in the back. And then right after that, that class is going to go about an hour. So around about 2.15, you'll meet with uh, Kathy to go through the Hebrew for your uh, Bar and Bar Mitzvah class. So obviously, don't have to be exact in those times, but around those times, I'm sure the teachers will come and get you. So uh, be ready for that. Um, also, just keep in mind, uh, we're coming up. I, I know we're about three, four months uh, 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 away from it, but trying to get a move on. We are going to have, um, obviously, our annual uh, Pesach Seder together. So be planning for that. That's April 19th, which is a Friday night. Uh, we'll probably have it again at the Sheraton, working on the menu and all those options. So just keep that in mind. Keep praying. Uh, begin to pray if you haven't started uh, for you know who to invite. Clearly, this is one of those that we like to get. We usually get over 200 uh, people attending. So keep that in mind. Keep praying. Get ready. Um, for a great time uh, uh, with, with God in his presence at his banqueting table. I mean, um, that's all I have, though, for today. Just a reminder, Zadaka Box and Back is for your tithes, offerings, donations. One alongside to my left is for your praise reports and prayer requests. As we go into Oneg, let's say the bracha together. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech hawalam, hamutzi lekamin haloretz, b'ashem Yeshua hamashiach. Amen. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the breath from the land. Name Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. Shavuot Tov.